In the summer of 2023, Pope Francis sparked controversy during a private conversation. A recording of the conversation was later made public. In it, he used the Italian term frosiagine. This term, often considered derogatory, refers to effeminate or stereotypical gay behavior. The context involved a discussion about challenges within the priesthood. However, the use of such language, particularly by the leader of the Catholic Church, ignited debate and hurt within the LGBTQ plus community and beyond. The incident highlighted the complexities of language and the enduring impact of words, especially those rooted in prejudice. It also raised questions about Pope Francis's stance on LGBTQ plus issues, given his previous calls for inclusion and compassion. This essay delves into the Frotiagene controversy, examining the term's historical and contemporary significance, its implications in the context of Pope Francis's papacy, and the Catholic Church's evolving relationship with the LGBTQ plus community. The controversy surrounding Frotiagene serves as a stark reminder of the power of language. Words, especially those laden with historical baggage, can wound and exclude. Pope Francis's use of the term, regardless of intent, caused pain and reignited debates about the church's relationship with LGBTQ plus individuals. It underscored the ongoing need for sensitivity, understanding, and respectful dialogue on matters of sexuality and faith. Ultimately, the Frochagene controversy is a microcosm of the larger struggle for LGBTQ plus inclusion within the Catholic Church. It highlights the tension between traditional teachings and the lived experiences of LGBTQ plus Catholics. This incident, while painful, presents an opportunity for growth, dialogue, and a deeper examination of how language shapes our understanding of faith and sexuality. To fully grasp the weight of Frosiogyne, one must delve into its historical roots. The term originates from Frosio, an Italian slur equivalent to faggot in English. It carries centuries of prejudice and discrimination, often used to demean and dehumanize gay men. Its historical usage is intertwined with societal homophobia, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and justifying discrimination. Frochiagene itself amplifies the negativity. The suffix agene denotes a quality or characteristic. So, the word implies a negative essence or inherent flaw associated with being gay or exhibiting effeminate traits. This linguistic nuance deepens the insult, moving beyond a simple slur to a condemnation of one's very being. The term's historical context is crucial to understanding why its use, especially by a religious leader, is deeply problematic. It evokes a painful past of persecution and marginalization faced by LGBTQ plus individuals. Even if unintended, using such language, even in a private conversation, risks normalizing and perpetuating this harmful legacy. Understanding the historical baggage of Frochia Jean is essential to comprehending the hurt and anger it evokes. The term is not a neutral descriptor, but a weapon wielded to inflict emotional pain and reinforce societal prejudices. Its use, regardless of intention, trivializes the suffering of LGBTQ plus individuals and undermines efforts to foster a more inclusive and compassionate church. While rooted in the past, Frosia Jean remains unfortunately relevant in contemporary Italian society. Though its usage might be declining, particularly among younger generations, the term retains its power to offend and marginalize. It persists in casual conversations sometimes veiled as humor or playful banter, but nevertheless perpetuating harmful stereotypes. The word's continued presence in everyday language reflects the enduring presence of homophobia, even in a country considered relatively progressive on LGBTQ plus rights. It highlights the insidious nature of prejudice, often lurking beneath the surface of seemingly accepting societies. For LGBTQ plus individuals in Italy, encountering Frosia Jean can be a painful reminder of the discrimination they face. It can make them feel unsafe, unwelcome, and invalidated. The term's casual use, even if not directed at a specific individual, contributes to a hostile environment, undermining their sense of belonging and dignity. The persistence of Frosia Jean in Italian society underscores the need for ongoing dialogue and education to combat homophobia and promote understanding. While legal protections are vital, changing hearts and minds requires addressing the subtle ways prejudice manifests in language and everyday interactions. Pope Francis's papacy has been marked by a complex and often contradictory relationship with the LGBTQ plus community. On one hand, 
He's known for his compassionate rhetoric and emphasis on pastoral care for marginalized groups. His famous, who am I to judge, comment regarding gay priests signaled a departure from the harsher tone of his predecessors. Throughout his papacy, Pope Francis has repeatedly called for a more welcoming and inclusive church, urging Catholics to embrace those on the margins, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. He's met with LGBTQ plus individuals and advocated for their dignity and respect within society. These actions have offered a glimmer of hope for many LGBTQ plus Catholics yearning for acceptance within their church. However, these gestures of openness often clash with the Vatican's official stance on homosexuality, which remains rooted in traditional doctrine. The Catechism of the Catholic Church still defines homosexual acts as intrinsically disordered. This dissonance between Pope Francis's seemingly compassionate words and the Church's official teachings creates confusion and frustration for LGBTQ plus Catholics. The Frochagene controversy further complicates this already intricate relationship. It raised questions about the sincerity of Pope Francis's inclusive message, particularly among those who felt hurt and betrayed by his language. This incident highlighted the challenges Pope Francis faces in balancing his personal pastoral approach with the weight of centuries-old doctrine.